Hi guys, welcome to another card trick. This one is good when you've got a couple of people helping you out because it makes it more interesting. You can do it with one spectator, but trust me, it will work a lot better with two. And um, you use a deck of cards. You can give them a shuffle. doesn't really make any difference. Or give them a few cuts. And what you do is you tell people you've made an unusual offbeat prediction. And you turn to the first spectator and say, look, we've got just a regular deck of 52 cards here. What I'd like you to do is just touch the back of any one. This one here. Okay, what I'm going to do is to show you the card. Have you got that in your head? That is your freely chosen card. Okay. We put it back, we give it a few cuts and shuffles just to make sure you don't know where it is. But you're going to choose a card, but in a different way. You're actually going to just think of a card. You're not going to touch a card, call out a card. You're just going to go through the 52 cards and just think of any one. Okay. Have you got one? And again, we just mix them up. You've chosen a card mentally. You've chosen a card physically. For the first time, what was the card that you mentally selected? Jack of Spades. Okay, let's find the Jack of... There it is, the Jack of Spades. For the first time, what was the card that you touched and looked at? The Eight of Hearts. This is incredible because if you go through all the cards, there's no duplicates out of the 52 cards, but it just so happens that your card that you thought of and your card that you chose have ended up together. Some people say, well, do you know what? That could be a coincidence. It could happen. And you're, you're right, it could just be a coincidence. But I said I made a bit of an offbeat prediction earlier. You see, earlier on, I put one card in here which didn't have a blue back. It had a red back. You're not going to believe this, but your card that you mentally selected, you could have chosen any one of these cards in the pack. It is the one with a red back. Isn't that amazing? You see that red back. But it goes one stage further than that. You touched the Eight of Hearts. Just a regular card. Eight of Hearts. Not only did I choose the Jack of Spades from a red-backed pack, but I knew that you would choose the Eight of Hearts. The trick you've just seen is using a faked deck. Now, I don't often use trick decks of cards because they're normally classed as a one-trick pony. You do one trick and have to swap out the deck. But I do like this effect, and I also want to use a deck of cards that uh, several months ago I did a video on here showing you how to make your own rough and smooth pack using a can of spray and I put the link up here and down in the description if you haven't seen that video uh, check it out you can make your own rough and smooth and I just thought because these have been tucked away for quite a while I thought I'd dig them out and see if they still work and they seem to work fine as you can see. How does it work? Well, it is a fake deck. It's a rough and smooth deck. As a magician, you'll know what that is. But what I've got is 26 blue backs and 26 red backs alternating. All of the red backed cards have the Eight of Hearts written on it. As you can see, all of the blue backed cards are indeed the Eight of Hearts. So what you need are 26 identical cards and 26 regular cards. On the backs of the red, you coat them with the spray. And on the face of all of the identical Eight of Hearts or whatever card you're using, coat those. So basically, when they're together, they kind of grip, put a bit of pressure on, they don't slip apart. 
if you release the pressure, they slip apart. That's how the rough and smooth works. But of course, you're magicians, you know that already. So this is how the trick worked. Basically, I've given away the secret, but you can freely show the cards. You can even give them an overhand shuffle. Give them a cut. I get the first spectator to choose a card. They touch it. Now what I want to do is to release the pressure on this so that the cards separate. However, at this point, I don't want anyone to see the red back. So what I do is I time it so that as I go to spread this and lift my hand up, I just turn this towards myself. That's all I do as I then show the spectator their chosen card. You ask them to remember that. You put it back, square it, lose it. Now you turn the cards face up. You talk about selecting 52 cards mentally. Actually, there's only 26, but they choose one, say the Ten of Diamonds. You square them up. You can cut them. You then say, what was the card you mentally selected? You go through and you look for the Ten of Diamonds. When you come to the Ten, there it is there, you stop. I don't want to go too far because they can see what's behind it. But all you do is you release the pressure off that card, push it across, and it looks as though the two chosen cards, the mental and the physical selection, have somehow come together in the whole pack. You cut the cards, you can show them like that. The cards are just all blue-backed. But you talk about you had this offbeat prediction, it was a red-backed card. You physically chose the eight. You chose this. I knew that you would choose this. And what I do is I just cover my fingers over and just show the red back. There it is. Now, straight away, the guy that chose this mentally is impressed. It's the only red back card in the deck. But when you then reveal that you actually knew what the physical selection would be, it's like a double whammy. And that's called the offbeat prediction. Practice and enjoy.